Hello, I'm Atuba Judd and welcome to the month of November. This thing, this month is going to be a great month, praise God. Now, we are currently on our 24-hour prayer and fasting. So, I want you to join us. If you haven't joined yet, get, get to the next watch and join the prayer meeting. Now, the information is on your screen. So, we're praying via Zoom. Now, we actually have a prayer meeting, but it's on Zoom. I don't want you to miss any meeting. Now, I know today's a working day, but listen, get, get, find a way to join these meetings. Praise God. Just find a way. And, and we, we started praying at midnight, and then we prayed at 3 a.m., then 6 a.m. this morning, and then 9 a.m., 12 noon, 3 p.m., 6 p.m., 9 p.m., and then we round up the fast at 11.30 p.m. Now, all this is west african time praise god so so wherever you are in the world you can actually join us and get the information get the things we're praying about and sometimes the Spirit of god gives us words that are very important he gives instructions and even as you fast listen for your personal instructions and and god will surely bless you i know this is going to be a great month because the lord have said between the month of october and december there's going to be great acceleration in our lives. I know he said it. And I, faithful is he who have promised he will make it good. Praise God. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, let's do what the Lord commanded us to do every day. Are you ready? Join me right now. Say, Father, I demand and I receive my daily bread today. And throughout this month of November, I will miss nothing. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Watch out the miracle that will come your way today. And Lord, as we go into today's broadcast, we honor your name and we trust you, Holy Spirit. You will guide us into all truth. You will not hide anything today from us that is profitable for our growth. And I declare right now, every body is lifted, yokes destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Now turn your Bibles with me to Galatians chapter 3. Now we are still talking about um, walking in spiritual intelligence, financial intelligence. Now, how do I get to work intelligently with God where the area of finance in my area of finances that's what we're talking about you see I found that just like I've shared with you you'll get to realize that truly money is never your problem it has never been the problem it has never been the issue a change of mind is what the issue has always been the state of your mind that's what the issue has always been now look at this, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13. It says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone that hangs, hangeth on a tree. It says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Note he used the word redeemed. Redeemed means to save by buying back. Or to deliver by buying back. So when you deliver in redemption, you have to pay something. So you negotiate and you drop something and you collect. That's why it's called redeem or redemption. Praise God. Now it says Christ redeemed us and he did that with his life. Now the worst thing or the, the, the greatest judgment or let me say the worst judgment anybody can receive or the final. I mean, after that, you can't judge a man again. It's death. If you give the man the death penalty, it's over. So, so Jesus, no matter what the cost of 
of the law would have been Jesus gave the highest penalty, which was his life. He died on the cross. So there is nothing again that you owe nothing. He's paid it all, praise God. Now, what's the reason why did he have to go through this? And mind you, he wasn't just talking about the Jewish people. Because sometimes we can just think, oh, because of the law, he's talking about the law of Moses. No, he wasn't talking about the law of Moses. He wasn't just talking about the law of Moses. He was talking about any law that exists in any place, that your village law that stops you from prospering the way God wants you to prosper. You have been redeemed from it. Now, because he was talking, because the Bible said, for God so loved the world, not just the Jewish people. He so loved the world. Now, sometimes we get myopic in, in even when we read the scripture, we just, our minds are just closed. Yes, Jesus says salvation is of the Jews. Now, what he's trying to say is the model we see is from there, but then it's the same thing that, ex that he exercises in every place. But because of the, being myopic in our understanding, we miss the point. And, and you see, now he's talking about Christ redeeming us from the cause of the law. And all we can think about is the law of Moses. And the law of Moses was only given to the Jewish people. But you see, God in this deliverance was not just talking about Israel. He was talking about everyone. Remember God said to Abraham, through you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. So he was thinking about you in that village far away. Where can we think about now? Bayasa State or Karanamuda in Katsina State. Anywhere you can think about Christ's redemption is powerful enough to redeem me from that law that exists in that place. So that's what he was referring to. All right then. Now I said the reason for this redemption is that the blessing, verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So now he says that the blessing of Abraham might come on all the Gentiles, so the Gentiles can have access to the blessing of Abraham, just like the Jewish man has access to the blessing of Abraham. Why? Because Christ died for everyone. Praise God. Now you need to understand this. If you don't understand this, now I talked about being myopic in our understanding. The same thing, let me give you an, a perfect example. And, and you, you need to get this. Because what I'm going to be sharing with you this week, there are going to be practical things that will make you walk out of any kind of poverty that you're involved with any kind what i'm going to share with you this week will, will bring you out of being broke this thing you will never be broke another day of your life if you listen to what i'm going to be sharing with you especially this week now one thing that you must understand is this and i want you to take this point carefully nobody or number one, God is not a respecter of persons. Number two, nobody in this life has more advantage than you. What makes us think that some people have more advantage of, or, or than us is our lack of understanding or lack of broad view of the situation of things. I'll give you a perfect example. You know in scriptures, Joseph, Joseph came to his brothers one day and told them that, hey, I had a dream. He said, okay, Mr. Jima, what did you dream this time? He said, I saw the moon and the stone, the star. I saw the sun and the moon and the 11 stars bow down to me. Now, he said, he saw the 11 stars bow down to him. Now, in that same word, he just called all his brothers stars. 
Did you see that? He called them stars. Now, their interpretation of that prophecy was wrong. Because if so now you are saying all of us will bow down to you. So you'll be our boss, you'll be our guy, you, small boy. And then they began to plot to kill him. Now the truth is, that was not necessarily what God was saying, or that was not the final story. You see, lack of understanding or lack of comp full comprehension of a thing can destroy you. Because when, once you lack full comprehension, you have the wrong mindset. And then you now take a decision based on that wrong mindset. And that's where trouble comes. So now you see, he said, I saw the 11 stars bow down to me. Hey, we are all stars. So it's possible, Joseph, you were seeing your own part of the vision. Because it's possible every star at some point will bow down to the other star. Did you get that? Yeah. See, sometimes when people share their dreams with you, instead of celebrating with them, you start saying, you know, many, many years ago, many years ago, there's this cartoon. I, I, I grew up as a child, and I think that's the first newspaper cartoon I recognized, um, I, I have memory of as a child. And yeah, growing up, reading that in every day, reading that in every day, it took me a while before I understood, you know, like I said, as a child in, 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 at home there. You know, just there. You know, they used this newspaper to wrap some materials that my dad, because my dad is a builder, so there's some of these materials they used this newspaper to wrap and just kept it there. And what was in this cartoon? Um, a, a guy and a lady, you know, these cartoon characters, they were speaking. And then the, the guy said, when I grow up, I'm going to have a whole lot of money and I'm going to buy all the houses in this world. And then the guy responded, but well, what makes you think I'm going to sell them to you? <laughs> you see? <laughs> you see? Now, people share their visions with you. And the fact that they are sharing their visions with you doesn't mean you are without vision. The question is, how do you see? In that cartoon that I just shared with you, the guy said, you know, the lady actually said, there was a guy that was speaking, I'm going to buy up everything. And the lady said, what makes you think I'm going to sell them to you? She didn't go into an argument that when you buy, oh, so which one will I now have? See, that, that's the wrong mentality. She is saying that I'm going to have them before you are ready to buy them. So I won't, I, I won't sell them to you. Please. So we are all going to be great. Yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I, I, you see, don't allow. That's why. That's why He told us. He says, "Whatsoever thoughts, whatsoever things are good, perfect, sound of good report, think on these things. Don't let the wrong thoughts, cause, cause wrong thoughts. Yeah, cause you hear things every day. You hear people share their stories with you. You hear people share their dreams with you." It's not about their sharing. It's about the thoughts going through your mind when they are sharing. If you allow the wrong thoughts to dwell in your mind, you will misinterpret what they are, the good thing that they are sharing with you. Meanwhile, their sharing of their dream can bring an information to you that will even liberate you or cause you to see your own opportunity. But Joseph's brothers refused to think they just concluded that this, this small boy saying we'll all bow down to him. But then the truth is this. Now I had a, a dear man of God share this and, and it blessed me so much. He said, every star, we are all stars, but at different points in life, every star will bow down to one another. So he gave the description of a medical star. You're the best medical doctor. Yes, you're the star. But one day, you need help. Someone is trying to take over your land. So what do you do? You call another star, a lawyer. Please come and help me recover my land. Or come and help me take off these people from this place. And then the, medic, the lawyer tells you, oh, okay, this is what you're going to do. This is the document I need. Come and see me in my office at this time. You will bow down to him. And then the lawyer feels, oh, now nah, I'm a star. Yes, 
the lawyer gets sick. Now he needs you, the medical doctor, so the lawyer starts bowing to the medical doctor's staff. Vice versa. I mean, that's how it is with everything with life. It doesn't mean when the medical doctor was bowing down to the lawyer start, the medical doctor lost his shining. No, that is how God have made this whole thing. So there was no reason for Joseph's brothers to be angry with Joseph. They should have just celebrated with him and telling him that, wow, that means we are going to be bowing down to one another. Praise God. Oh, our time is up for today. Listen, I've got a lot to share with you this week, and I don't want you to miss it. But listen, before then, get in. Get into the next prayer meeting that we're having today. I'll see you then. Until then, God bless you. Bye-bye.